Hallelujah. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for this moment we have in your presence once again. As we hear you speak your words of life, we ask eternal God that you breathe upon this word and cause this word to have a place in our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, eternal Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Let me say a very happy Easter to everyone who is watching us from wherever you are watching us on the planet. We say happy Easter unto you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This morning, I'll be sharing to us an Easter message that is titled The Empty Tomb. The Empty Tomb. And we'll be taking our reading from Matthew chapter 28. From verse 1 through to 10. I'll be reading the Good News Translation. And it says, After the Sabbath, as Sunday morning was done in Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Suddenly, there was a violent earthquake. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled the stone away, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid that they trembled and became like dead men. The angel spoke to the women. You must not be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised, just as he said. Come here and see the place where he was lying. Verse 7. Go quickly now and tell his disciples. He has been raised from death and now he is going to Galilee ahead of you there you will see him remember what i have told you verse 8 so they left the tomb in a hurry afraid and yet filled with joy and ran to tell his disciples suddenly jesus met them and said peace be with you they came up to him took hold of his feet and worshiped him do not be afraid jesus said to them go and tell my brothers to go to galilee and there they will see me praise the lord some years ago, I was sent on an errand by my dad to go buy some eggs to be used for breakfast. As I was returning, I met a friend who was older than myself who lived within the vicinity and he approached me and said he had something wonderful to show me. Of course, I became interested in what he wanted to say to me. And then he said to me, I can make the eggs in your hands to become double. And I said, how? He said, well, if you are ready to obey what I say, then the eggs in your hands, instead of being two, can become four. And I said, wow, please go ahead and tell me what to do. And the young man said, I should hit the egg on the floor. Being an older person than myself, I trusted him and felt that he knew better than myself. And then I took one of the eggs and smashed it on the floor. And then I said, ah, I did, but the egg broke. He said, yes, the one you broke is one, but the one you are seeing on the ground is another one. There and then, I knew that I had been scammed, and I knew that the young man's promise was an empty one. My problem was how to get home and explain to my dad what had happened. How do I tell him that somebody said I should hit a fresh egg on the floor, and I did, and the egg got broken? Well, I summoned up courage and went towards the house. And when I got home, my dad saw that the egg were, eggs were not complete. And he asked me what happened. And I told him, I said, well, as I was coming, somebody said he was going to double the eggs. And I listened to the person and hit the egg on the floor. But it ended up that he, he promised was an empty one. And my father looked at me with pity and said, you were taking advantage of because you were foolish. Have you not realized that the promise of multiplying the egg was empty? There and then, I knew that the promises of men could not be relied upon. Now, to be empty means to be devoid of significance or force. It means to be hollow, to be vacuous. It also means to be holding or containing nothing. To be bare, to be blank, to be plundered or ransacked or 
to be void. It means to be completely wanting or lacking. On that fateful morning, when the two Marys left home for the tomb, they had so many empty promises confronting their hearts. They were afraid as they faced the dilemma of their master being flogged, insulted, tried, and finally before their own very eyes, he, he was subjected to being nailed upon the cross and then was crucified. They were subjected to the three most horrifying and terrifying days of their entire life as they followed the Lord Jesus Christ through the streets of Golgotha and saw how he was humiliated, how he was spat upon, how he was flogged. These women were so terrified until they got to that place when he was nailed and hung on the cross. And in their very eyes, his body was removed. And suddenly, they realized that the master they had trusted in so much, the master they had followed all their life, was suddenly going to be laid inside the tomb. And these women, on that very first day, they followed until Jesus was laid in the tomb. And then on the second day, they went. And this third day, they also came here. And they went very early in the morning because they were women. They, because as women, they woke up very, very early. They went because as women, they cared about the one who was slain in the tomb. They went because as women, they were probably afraid of being harassed by the Roman soldiers. Because if it was bright and they could be seen, they could be harassed. They went as women because they wanted probably to confirm, confirm what Jesus had told them. While they went, the thought of rolling the stone to gain access to Jesus' body was on their minds. And they were on their way. But on arriving there, they discovered that the tomb was empty. Maybe the master's promise was also an empty one. Like the young man who told me that he could multiply my eggs. And they had taken this man's body to somewhere else to be buried where the disciples could not see him. But all of a sudden, they became more terrified. Because the Bible says there was an angel that was sitting in front of the tomb. And was seated on the stone with which the tomb was closed. The angel spoke to these women. You must not be afraid, he said unto them. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. And verse 6, the Bible says he is not here. He has been raised just as he said. Come here and see the place where he was lying. In other words... The angel invited the women and said, Come and see the proof that the tomb was empty. Emptiness robs one of his or significance or force of life. And when this happens, when Christ is absent, there is a grappling and struggle for that significance. Venom Howard said, A certain number of people seek power over other people in a desperate attempt to find themselves. They fall for self discovery, is spiritual in nature, not social or political. Authoritatively telling other people what to do is their distraction from an inner emptiness they can never feel. End of quote. In other words, this man was saying that wherever Jesus is not there, that there is an emptiness that makes people to search for self-discovery somewhere else. And what they do is that they either use social avenues or political avenues to try to authoritatively force other people to give them that self-significance. But this man is saying, that once Jesus is not there, that significance cannot be found. The honors of this world, what are they but puff and emptiness and peril of falling? So said St. Augustine. He said that the honors of this world, they are nothing but puff and emptiness. When a man seeks significance in political power, when he seeks significance in social power, he will end up being empty because no matter how much power you gain, you will discover that you will be hungry for more power. The emptiness of life can only be filled when Jesus is present. Somebody else, Tyson Fury, the world heavyweight champ, uh, boxing champion says, and he agrees, he said, every time I stray away from the Lord's word, I find emptiness and darkness. Why other emptiness engender despair and hopelessness? The empty tomb stood contrary. Hallelujah. Now the empty tomb stood for the following. Number one, the empty tomb was a pro fulfillment of the promises that Jesus had made. All that Jesus had told his disciples why he was alive suddenly vanished and seemed unrealizable when he went to the cross and before their very eyes was nailed and gave up his spirit. When the tomb stood before them empty 
and they heard the angel they became partially joyous but on meeting Jesus later their joy was full I don't know the emptiness that is confronting your life right now but I want to say that there is power there is power in the presence of Jesus and whatever that emptiness is because we are commemorating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ today the empty tomb proves that all of Jesus' promise can come to pass in your life. Whatever promise God has given unto you, my brother, my sister, hold on. Even when things physically around are showing that it is not going to come to pass, I want to assure you that Jesus can bring all his promises to pass. The empty tomb is a fulfillment of the fact that the promises of Jesus can come to pass. And whatever promise he has given to you, I pray this morning that you hold on, you hang on, and that you will find that the empty tomb will fulfill those promises for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two is that the empty tomb was an assurance of hope. The dejected hopeless women and disciples suddenly became optimistic as a result of the empty tomb. I do not know what hopeless situation you are going through right now. Even as the world goes through the pandemic of the coronavirus, it seems hopeless. It seems as if nothing good can come out but I want to tell you that the empty tomb the resurrection time is a time that tells us that our hope as humans can once again be restored because Jesus came to give us that hope and I pray for you this morning that whatever hopeless situation you find yourself that the resurrection power of Jesus will meet you this morning and give you hope in the name of Jesus Christ Helen Keller said that optimism is the faith that leads to achievement. Nothing can be done without hope and confidence. In other words, when you lose hope and confidence, you can achieve totally nothing. That is why you must take hold of this moment of the empty tomb of Jesus Christ. Even as he has resurrected, you must allow that to give you hope. And the essence of optimism is that it takes no account of the present, but it is a source of inspiration, of vitality, of hope, where others have resigned. It enables a man to hold his head high, to claim the future for himself and not abandon it to his enemy. Detrit Bonhoeffer is the one that made that statement. He said that the essence of optimism is that it takes no account of the present. It doesn't look at what you are presently going through, but it is a source of inspiration, of vitality and hope where others have resigned, where others have given up. You can become optimistic because Jesus is resurrected. You can become optimistic because the resurrection of Jesus is a pronouncement of hope for you. It's an assurance of hope for you. It enables a man to hold his head up high to claim the future for himself and not to abandon it. Whatever you are going through right now, I want you to lift up your head because the Bible says he is the glory and the lifter of my head. Lift up your head high this morning and because Jesus is alive, you can be sure that you can take hold of, of your future. When the disciples had the opportunity to confront their enemies with the gospel after Pentecost, they did it with optimism. They did it with hope. They did it with this assurance that the empty tomb was a proof that their Lord was alive. Number three, that thing that the empty tomb stands for is that the empty tomb was a proclamation of victory. Hallelujah. When Jesus died, the devil and death thought they had won. When he went to the cross and finally gave up the ghost, they thought they had won. They were, I guess they must have been rejoicing in the pit of hell. They must have been rejoicing that finally the one who came to redeem mankind is finally dealt with. They thought they could still hold men captive either through the fear of death or in Hades. But the empty tomb heralded and proclaimed victory. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 8 says, Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive. One translation says, he led a train of vanquished foes and he bestowed gifts on men. Hallelujah. The empty tomb was an announcement of liberation from the powers of the grave and the fear of death. Maybe you are out there this morning and because of maybe a health challenge or whatever challenge you are facing in your life, you have become terrified. You have become so afraid of dying. I want to tell you, 
that Jesus can give you that confidence to stare death in the face and say death you can do me nothing because death is not actually the end of life it is only a transition and if you have Jesus in your life if Jesus is alive in your heart you can be translated unto a greater life unto a more glorious life so whatever is tearing you in the face this morning do not be afraid because Jesus has proclaimed the victory for us the songwriter said up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph while his foes he arose from the grave in victory and that victory he has given unto us number four of the empty tomb is that it was an enactment of a new era all kings leaders heroes or heroines men and women of valor of the past and present before the announcement of the empty tomb died they disappeared they turned into an object of worship etc depending on whatever fable or story we have been told about them but never did any one of these men of these heroes of these great leaders of these great men and women of valor never did any one of them in their bodily forms resurrect but jesus the king of kings and the lord of lords the firstborn of all creation the one who created all things and hold all things who cannot be killed laid down his life and after three days he picked it up again and announced a new era he announced a paradigm shift today everyone who believes in him has the hope of eternity he said to the family of Lazarus anyone who believes in me even though he dies physically shall live again Jesus proclaimed a new era through the empty tomb when his body was not found in that tomb anymore he was saying there is hope that a man will die and one day that man will resurrect again he said there is hope that death is not a final destination anymore it is only a transition into a better life i pray for you this morning that that hope will bring newness of life unto you in the name of jesus christ so the empty tomb was an enactment of a new era and that new era is a new era of success it's a new era of victory it's a new era of living in abundance it's a new era where the devil can no longer rule or reign over you anymore if you are out there this morning and you are under the bondage or the power of satan and his angels and they are tormenting your life i pray for you this morning by the power of the resurrected jesus christ that you be set free in the name of jesus christ i pray that you be set free in the name of jesus i pray that you be set free in the name of jesus whatever aspect of your life that is under the bondage of satan and his agents this morning i declare a new era of freedom in the name of jesus christ number five which is the last i'll be sharing this morning was that the empty tomb was an announcement of a triumph the triumph of life over death the triumph of power over weakness the triumph of divine health over sickness the empty tomb was an announcement of faith over fear it was a triumph of joy over mourning it was a triumph of hope over despair good news over bad news it was an announcement that jesus lives and lives forever this morning i stand under the unction of the power of god and i decree and declare a triumphant era for you in the name of jesus christ i decree a triumphant era for humanity over the coronavirus in the name of jesus i decree a triumphant era for you over sickness over failure over backwardness over setbacks in the name of jesus the empty tomb was an announcement of a triumph and that triumph is yours this morning in the name of jesus christ yes i am talking to you it is yours in the name of jesus receive it now in the name of jesus christ go tell somebody that is no longer on the cross neither is he anymore in the grave the tomb is empty an empty tomb is there to prove that my savior lives by the power of the resurrected christ i decree today that every tomb that has held in prison or dictated over your life over your destiny they are empty now in the name of jesus christ i said they are empty in the name of jesus and by the power of that jesus i declare you triumphant this morning i declare you hopeful this morning 
I declare you free in the name of Jesus Christ. Go celebrate because Jesus is no longer in the grave and the tomb is empty and proves that he lives because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone and because I know he owns my future. My life is what I live in just because he lives. The empty tomb proves that Jesus is alive. And because he's alive, he remains Lord. He remains King. He remains Master over every life situation. I pray for you this morning that whatever situation your life is going through, at whatever low point your life is this morning, by the power of the resurrected Jesus, I decree and declare a lifting up for you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare lifting for you in the name of Jesus. I declare lifting in the name of Jesus. I speak to your life that from today, there will be a divine turnaround. There will be a divine shift in your situation that you will begin to advance towards positivity. That you will begin to live an optimistic life, a hopeful life, a triumphant life that will begin to reflect the plan and the purpose of God in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. It is well with you. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Join us same time next Sunday for another wonderful broadcast. God bless you. Stay home and stay safe. Hallelujah.